Right, mate, thanks very much for letting us in the house. Um, last time I was in here, Jim O'Brien on the guitar, right. Paddy McCourt on the whiskey at six in the morning, I think, and remember we, Jerry Carlyle's brand Tano. I remember, mate, Square Mules, weren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Square <laughs> told Mules. <laughs> we used to always phone with Conan Arsene Wenger. He said it was Arsene Wenger, uh, remember? Oh, what a night. Anyway, right, we'll get started, mate. Uh, just going back to when we were young pups, eh? Mm-hmm. Um, I remember I came through, Fade on D, I think I was 15, and uh, Jimmy Mack took us up to watch your team play, mate. I was a couple of years older than you. Well, yeah, I'm I, was couple years older so I was 15, I was coming through full time, so mm-hmm. came up to watch your team play, and remember seeing you play and thinking, Phew, I may as well get a mega bus in mate, I've got absolutely no chance of this. <laughs> this is the standard man, because it was, it was a joy mate, but um, obviously back then everyone was after you, wouldn't they? So many teams, uh, why did you choose to sign with Celtic? When I was younger, when I was about 12 or 13, uh, 12 or 13, I went, I went on trial to loads of different teams, went to, my, I was going to, I was going to sign for Arsenal, uh-huh. and it was my dad who basically said to me, he was like, look, you've, uh, You've got how much chance have you got to get in the first team at Arsenal? Do you know what I mean? How many guys come back for when they're 16, 17 after getting released from Arsenal? I said obviously that might not happen to you, but you've got a far better chance of getting the first team at Celtic. You can stay at home, you won't get homesick along those lines. And I was like, no, nah, you're probably right. So I ended up signing for Celtic when I was 13 and just played obviously till I was you know, 16 and then went in full time. But I remember actually my first day. Uh, I was in school and uh, I got a phone call to play Youth Cup quarter final. Uh-huh. And so I was only 15 at the time. Willie phoned me and said, Oh, need to, need to come in, so to leave school. And uh, I got in, obviously, like getting changed in the dressing room, mate. You've got like Fozzie and all that there, like mm-hmm. older guys, hair in their chest and all that. I've got like, I've not even got an okay hair, do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> mate, I had a pair of Fubu boxers on. <laughs> Mate, Fubu boxes, I'm thinking no one's ever going to see these. I had to go into the youth team dressing room, mate, and get changed. Get slaughtered for them now. Nah, mate, I, I kept them on, didn't even shower. <laughs> <laughs> I kept them on the full game. But that was like my first involvement with the youth team. And I played, I came on that night, set up the winner. The uh, youth Cup final? No, it was Youth Cup quarter final. Right, it was okay. at Rugby Park. Uh-huh. And Martin Neal came in the dressing room after the game. And uh, he, picked, like, he picked me out and went, Son, how, how old are you? And I thought he was going to go, like, Oh, you were brilliant or that. I went, oh, 15, he went, you look about eight. <laughs> and I was like, all right. That was kind of early, and uh, after that, I went in full time. And, you know, I kind of always, always had in my head, you know, I was looking at guys like Ross Wallace. Like, he was a year ahead of me, but he played for the first team, the end of his first year in full time, didn't he? And I thought, that's my goal, I need <laughs> to do that. And then I gave I gave Willie a torrid time, do you know what I mean? Uh-huh. I, I was ahead of myself, because I thought, right, first thing, breaking the youth team. Don't play under 16s, play under 18s when you're 16. So me, Charlie and Rudy were the ones that get moved up. Played the full season, but I was still, I was going to see Willie saying, well, how am I on the first team? Do you know what I mean? At 16. And uh, now, I, now I look at it and go, I wasn't ready. Do you know what I mean? I didn't even have that good a season either. I had a decent season at youth team, but I was still, I was miles off it when I think about trying to play in the first, first team. team uh-huh. and Is it only when you go and train with the first team that you realise? Okay, it's only really been... I never trained with the first team at all, the first season, it was just youth team. We ended up winning the league, won the youth cup, but uh, I remember getting pulled back down to under 16s towards the end of the season, and Jim pulled me back down, because he was like, look, I don't think you're playing the way you can. And I went, nah, I went, I, I agree with you, you're probably right. Uh, played a few games back for under 16s and then ended that season quite well, finished, we went away to Germany with the youth team, played like a tournament over there, it was like Hamburg beat us in the final, Kevin Prince Boateng in that. Wow. Uh, I ended up getting played with the tournament and I kind of went away, had a good summer, then came back in mm. that season and that was the season the fo- when I turned 17. That was when I really kind of, that was when I kicked on really. Mm-hmm. Did you always feel like Tommy and Willie and Jim were pu- pushing you in to get into the first team? Nah, not really. Yeah. Willie, did, Willie did everything he could to drop me at times. Yeah. I mean going to see him after a Rangers game where he played, uh, kept, he dropped me, played Rangers away and he, he dropped me and I just I was going to go and see him before the game and I thought nah, I'll wait till I get him after the game. and. Uh, Bus get back to Celtic Park, and I went. And I was like, Willie, I'd like to talk to you. I'm 16, do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, Willie, I want to talk to you. <clears throat> uh, pulled him in, and then I was like, How can you start that guy ahead of me? And he's like, Oh, Aiden, those guys playing for contracts and all that. You know, there's a lot. I was like, Nah, the best player should play. You know, now when I look back and I go, <clears throat> Why didn't you done that? Just because you were so desperate. I don't know. I, pro- I probably, I probably thought. 
I probably had a lot of confidence more ability yeah. as well and thinking I am better than this guy that's playing but now when I look back on it I think I'm glad I've done it but probably a couple of regrets as well do you know what I mean because mm -hmm. I gave Ollie a torrid time that first year chatting his door every couple of days saying what's happening here what's happening here why am I not training with the first team and that but yeah this, Willie, Willie was brilliant this, to be fair Willie's no Willie's like he's a, he's a great guy isn't he uh -huh. obviously Tommy was there as well Tommy, um, he, he was really pushing for you, Tommy, though, wasn't he always? I had a few run-ins with Tommy as well, though, yeah. like, especially that first season. I was, I was saying, how, how, am I not, how am I on the first team in that, you know? And he's going, you're not good enough yet. Mm -hmm. And I was like, nah, I think I am. And he's going, nah. Brought me back down to earth a few times as well. But it was only really the, the second season when I started to really, I was kind of playing off the striker and kind of playing up front. I started scoring goals every week for the youth team. Then uh, I, was just, I was just doing well and I remember actually... Uh, I don't know if I've ever told you this one. The one when I went with Kenny McDowell, when I went away with the Rezies, uh, no? I do remember it. <laughs> wow. Wow. You actually, do you understand why you <coughs> Aye. So we travelled up all the way up to Aberdeen? Travelled all the way up to Aberdeen on a Tuesday, a Monday. Mind the games like Monday night, youth team, uh, reserves. Get pulled up with the Rezies. Thought, oh, I'm going to play here. Well, I've got a good chance of maybe being on the bench and coming on. Travelled all the way up there, like in the morning, got up there. Found out that Kenny wheels back that... Uh, that whiteboard, doesn't he? Uh -huh. I used to. And just has the names of players who are playing on the bench. Uh -huh. Me and Gary Fraser were on the bench. So I was like, hey, man, whole, whole day, do you know what I mean, up there in Aberdeen. And uh, I pulled me and Gary Fraser before the game. And he was like, oh, that's, he's no why he's a here. He's a here for the experience and that. He's understand that. And Gary Fraser's like, aye, aye. And I went, no. Nah. <laughs> what do you mean experience? Sitting watching the Rezies play? <laughs> and he was like, that. is that the way you feel, aye? I was like, well, I'm just being honest. He went, see me tomorrow. And I was like that. No, but Kenny! <laughs> I was like, no, oh, but Kenny, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean, no, Kenny? And he just walked into the dressing room and I was like, oh, what have I done here? Uh -huh. So then uh, I walked into the dressing room after that and like, all the all the resi players were all going, like, looking at me going, who's this wee guy I think he is? Uh -huh. And uh, so I played the game and that travelled back down. I was training with the youth team the next day. And we're training down the bottom pitch at Barrafield and I get the... I get shouted out halfway through training. From who? From Willie. Willie went like, go up to get yourself up to the dressing room. Training was going on. And right. I was like, oh, something's, something bad's happening here. So I ran up the hill as quick as I could, got all the way into the dressing room, and Kenny and John Robertson were there. Oh, no. John Robertson, do you know what I mean? Uh -huh. And I was like, so I walked in. I was like, kind of. I was like, oh, how are you doing? He was like, sit down there. Hey, John Robertson absolutely terrorised me, man. I swear I was almost crying. Uh -huh. He was like, you might have been a good player when you were at school. Here, you're just like everybody else. You might have been good when you were 15, 16. Now, who are you? Who do you think you are? To be fair, I probably needed it, you know what I mean? Because, I mean, in a way, I shouldn't have said it. Of course I shouldn't have said it, but Kenny, I think Kenny remembered it as well. Because right after the John Robertson walked out, Kenny was brilliant. Kenny goes like that to me. He said, look, whatever, it's done. Do you know what I mean? You made a mistake, but look, you're not going to be involved for a while with me, but start working hard on that and uh, we'll see what happens and within two or three months I was starting for the Rezies every week. And was that when, <clears throat> after playing for the Rezies for week Played for the Rezies week in week out, aye. the call to go, and go up with the first team? I would, no, I was probably doing well for the Rezies and thinking oh, I might get a wee chance here with the, like, training with the first team that and remember getting told before training, me, me Rocco, me Rocco <laughs> and uh, hi, hi, me Rocco and Paul Lawson get the shout to go up and train with the first team. Yeah. Not mixed training, you know, where it's like half first team, half resi. So like, it was just us three with the first team, so everybody was there, do you know what I mean? Henrik Larson. Uh -huh. was you like nervous, uh -huh. I was nervous, aye. Of course I was nervous. Like remember that first day I was thinking to myself, I don't actually know if I'm good enough here. Mm -hmm. Because ball was going under my foot. Lenny was absolutely torturing me. Lenny was actually this. Who is this guy? <laughs> Who is this wee guy? <laughs> Who is this wee guy? What am I training with here? And I, after that, I was like, oh, don't get me the ball. Just, oh. uh, I remember doing a couple of things all right after that, but and then I remember. Five minutes, I've done something decent, I'll just hide for five minutes. Innit? Just uh, hide behind the advertising <laughs> board and just make the bar a few. <laughs> lying down, shooting for the ball. <laughs> <laughs> and, a, and a wee squeaky voice, get it? <laughs> no, it was just. It was, it was, well, after that session, I was thinking, Phew, I don't know if I'm, if I'm good enough here or. If the occasion got to me, I thought, I don't know if I'll train with the first team again. So, so what, what turned that then? What, what, what I, th I don't know, I just... You started to... I then started training with the first team kind of every day, uh -huh. and then you start to get used to it. You know, when you start to think, 
do you know what, I'm, I'm good enough here. Uh-huh. Like, uh, training with the first team every day. I travelled with the first team for about 10 games in a row. I was in the stand every game, to be fair, but I was still training with the first team every day. And then I just thought, you know, you start to become comfortable. You know it's like yourself. Uh-huh. You become comfortable, and then you start to probably show what you can do. I got my own back on Lenny, to be fair, though. Uh-huh. Eventually. Eventually. Because uh-huh. Lenny... Aye, uh, Lenny... Lenny took, like, terrorised me that day. But then after that, he was, he was fine. And you know what he's like? He's, I've got the ball in training, and there's nowhere else to go, and he's running towards me full, full pace. And I was just like, that Megs. Did you call it now? No, I, I don't think I called it, but I've just megged him. <clears throat> and he was like, threatening to kill me and all that. <laughs> I'm gonna do that again, I'll kill you and all that stuff. And I was like, oh, all right. Like, just still a young guy, still only yeah, 17. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, all right. And I remember uh, Tomo came up, and he's like, I'll give you 100 quid if you meg him again. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, no, Tom, what, I, I can't. I was like, mate, what, you'll batter me. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Henry Larson, Henry Larson came over and went like that. You want to make him again? Meg him. Did he? You want to make him again? Meg him. You're on the same pitch as him. He deserved oh, yeah. to be there. And I went, ah, oh, you're right. I never made him again. But, <laughs> but if I just remember that stuck out to me. Like, he came away over and he was like, does it matter? You want to make him again? Meg him. That's brilliant, eh? Uh, uh-huh. And I was just thinking, that's class coming for him as well. Do you know so, what I mean? 10 weeks, you said about 10 games you were away in the squad and stuff like that. When was. <coughs> leading up to your debut was uh, did you know you were going to be starting did you have a wee inkling or honestly I, I didn't have a clue nah. I thought we played the we played Aberdeen a couple of games before it and it was the league had already been won and mm-hmm. I thought I've got a chance against Aberdeen I think me and Barra were, were in, right. in the squad and we both thought we'd be playing and we might get a chance the two of us were in the stand again the two of us were like to each other can I get a game now I was like we've no chance of playing and then we'd uh Leading up to that, so I travelled away, been to like the Barcelona game and all that stuff, was in the stand for about 10, 10 11 games. And then we played uh, the practice match on the Friday. Were you involved in it? No, I didn't. Do you remember, no? No. the practice match on the Friday, <clears throat> and Mark O'Neill came down to watch. The mind. Oh, I, I was involved. Remember, 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 when, uh, uh, remember when you got the shout? Yeah, uh, remember when you got the shout? Mark O'Neill's come down to watch. Uh, the tempo went up 10 notches. Uh, people, were cha- people were chasing down lost causes, man, in the corner. Yeah, there, it, uh, oh, tackles were flying uh, in the lot. But I remember he came down to watch that game, and. Uh, I, I did really well. Mm-hmm. Scored a couple of goals in that, and uh, we then I think we were training on the Saturday with the first team. Travelled to through to the, uh, Tynecastle, travelled through to Edinburgh for the game, and then uh, sort of the usual, like, just sitting there. Like you never, even now to this day, he still doesn't like, give you a, give you a clue that you're playing or that. He just the team. comes, it walks in the dressing room. Everything goes, everything goes silent, and just whips out that bit of like crumpled up Bad hotel newspaper in it and he's just got his team written on it still the same to this day even in Ireland and uh, he just starts reading out the reading out the team you know Douglas Agat it's not even positions he does is it it's just a lot no, of no he doesn't even know the position he just reads the kind of team out and then so he's reading out the names and he just I'm sitting there thinking oh, I'll be in the stand and he's like Mickey Day and I was like oh, I'm actually playing here you know that way you get that yeah. feeling like just surreal really mm-hmm. to, to find out you're playing and then so uh, after he named that team, he never even came up to you, I want this for you, that for you. No, that. nothing. I didn't even know where I was playing. I was, I, I was <laughs> out to Wally, Stevie Walford. I was like, Wally, where, where am I playing? He's like, I'll already tell you once, son. Listen up. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, well, where am I playing then? He went, oh, you're up front with Henrik. Oh, wow. And I was like, right, I'm not striker though, you know that? He was like, no, nah, nah, just, you know, do what you've been doing. Just, you know, coming off the lines, you know, just drop into holes and stuff like that. And I was oh, like, oh, I just... And, it's a bit nervous, obviously, but it's it's different playing in a stadium for the first time with, with, with a crowd. Uh-huh. Do you know what I mean? Like a full crowd. It's surreal, and but it couldn't it couldn't have gone any better for me. I, I remember I got I was thinking to myself before you play in the first team. You know, when you just you want to play in the first team, your goal is to play first team football. Uh-huh. And I was thinking, what if I, the first ball goes under my foot and that, and I've a, I've a beast or whatever. Uh-huh. But someone I think someone played the ball down the corner, chased it, and then I got it and I done like. The turn, uh-huh, like, you, you know, foot, foot, uh-huh. I done that, won, won the free kick, <clears> and then straight after that, Petros put the ball in the box, and it's came to me the back stick, and I've just caught it, sweet, and like, it was so, like, slow motion, uh-huh. slow motion, honestly, uh-huh. because obviously the Hearts fans don't celebrate, obviously uh-huh. when, when a goal goes in for for, the, for us, so it went in, and I was thinking, did that actually go in there, and then you hear the Celtic fans celebrating, uh-huh. and it was just, 
Unbelievable, do you know what I mean? Scoring your debut after See, 50 minutes. See, you've won minutes. a game, but Martin mm-hmm. Neal never said that to you. Would any of the players come up and say, would, would they give you any I can't advice really, or was it just sink I can't or really swim? remember, sink or swim. And you're giving it the back of the <laughs> <laughs> Oh, mate, I was butterflying. <laughs> <laughs> Who was it? Was Big L? Was it Big L show up again? Was it him you uh, said with a sausage supper, man? No, that was... Uh, that was Andy Webster. What was it? Big Webster? He gets sent for a Chinese night. <laughs> <laughs> but none of the players uh, would come up and... I can't, I can't. I can't really remember. I think. They, I think they probably did because yeah. they know it's your debut and you're only. I've just turned eighteen, and I can't really remember exactly. But I just remember being like a bit nervous and shooting practice before the game and stuff. I'm sticking balls all over the place. Yeah. But that obviously the goal settled me right down, and after that I just like man, I just enjoyed it. The match. Got man of the match. Yeah, yeah, I just just enjoyed it, and I remember getting taken off and like, walking off the pitch, and yeah, you you you're never. You never say, you, you've never done that, clap fans before. So I'm just walking off and Martin was like, hey, clap the fans. And I'm like, look, giving it to Theo Walcott, clap. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, nah, it was just, just an unbelievable day. And I remember, like, none of my mates went to the game either. No, none of my family were there. No, nah, because they didn't think I'd be playing. And straight away, I came back and got my, look, went on the bus, got my phone. Everyone's texting me, oh, we're, we're out tonight. Uh-huh. Ended up got, so you go from, go from being... Not known at all. To uh-huh. I went out in Glasgow that night, and you're signing autographs for people. I'm uh-huh. thinking you're going to be in the squad again, and uh-huh. then, uh, you're the top man. Uh-huh. Signing autographs. I remember thought I actually got into got a knockback from the shack that night. Remember the shack? Uh-huh. Tell us about that. The shack, aye. So I got a knockback from there, but my mates like. You still had the strip and <coughs> on that. I did. I forty six on it. Trying to come on. <laughs> no worries. No worries. So you said about the youth game, youth cup final, uh-huh. uh, quarter final. Matt O'Neill said that little thing to you. Uh-huh. See, after your debut was. Still the same, no much praise to you now. He's, 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 a, he's a different type of manager. He, he, will, he, will, he will give you praise. I think he, I think he did, you yeah. know, after that. I remember one of the ones that sticks out in my mind is do you remember we played AC Milan, the game at home? Colocini. Colocini. He twisted his spine like he's done it. <laughs> <laughs> when he went to see Steadman after that. <laughs> Rob, Rob <laughs> right, after that game. Obviously, I did, I, did, I did a good game that night, and him and John Robertson pulled me after that, and they were like, "You need to settle yourself down, like, you know, there's, there's going to be a lot of hype about you now mm-hmm. and stuff like that." Because I didn't really played much of the first team before that. I kind of played the first couple of games of the season, had a really good pre-season, played the first few games of the season, then he then he kind of dropped me from kind of from nowhere. Never played much at all, and then played against Motherwell and scored, and then I played against AC Milan mm-hmm. on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I think I was actually out the Saturday night as well. I think, I think we were out, I remember. In the that. tunnel. Uh-huh. Saturday night as well, and we were playing AC Milan on the Tuesday. See, when you put in performances like that against AC Milan, see like the Sutton's Lennons, is that joint? That's when the accept is, is one of them? I think so. I think that season is when, I mean, I was only 18 and I ended up playing 40 games that season. Do you uh-huh. know what I mean? Obviously, the manager showed loads of faith in me from that point on. Played a lot of games. But far more than I ever could imagine. You know, at the end of that season, I'm still still in the resi changing room though. So you have to you have to earn it to get still in that first team dressing. Shenanigans in the resi changing room. Still shenanigans. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that was a great dressing. No, a great dressing. But so I guess I'm still in the resi changing room. But that was probably probably halfway through that season. I see what that's when you get accepted by the first team by the big hitters. Do you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Um, but uh, as you told me before, um, still trying to stitch you up. And was it the trip to America, big hats and. <laughs> no, but uh, the one I get stitched up with was Alan Thompson. Well, Mind that I was oh, telling you about the, the window. I saw. Obviously, that, that was a good dressing as well. But they were they were older players. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's kind of gone from the game now. But uh, do you know what I mean? Uh-huh. I think it's gone from the game now. You've got you've got those kind of big personalities in that dressing room. Obviously, Sutton, Henrik, Henrik had left. But then you've got Sutton, it, uh, Pomo, Hartson, Lenny. Do you know what I mean? Guys are up for a laugh all the time, guys are like schooling the younger boys, do you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like everything was like a test or trying to wind you up Test, aye, but uh, the first the first time I, I get I get done with Tomo was I'm in mind we used to used to train at Glasgow Green uh-huh. and Gunnar. Gunnar was driving the bus. <laughs> so I was working at Silky Park and they came and picked me up and I'm sitting in the back of the bus and uh, Tomo was behind us in his car and the lads are like somebody jump out and pull up his window wipers. I was like, I'll do it. So I've opened the back of the bus and jumped out and uh, pulled up his window wipers. But Gunnar's drove the bus away. <laughs> so you're talking like Kerry Dale Street, you know. <laughs> he's taking a right to go down London Road uh-huh. and he's drove the bus off. 
So I'm pulling up Alan Thompson's window wipers and going around the bus off with the door open. <laughs> so then I've pulled them up and Tom was like, what are you doing, what are you doing, young lad? So I started running away, so I'm running down London Road, my credit's on. <laughs> <laughs> and Tom was chasing me in his car and the Gunnar's driving the bus. And uh, Tom pulls, drives ahead of me and I'm, I'm still sprinting and he pulls in and he's like, who do you think you are? What's your name? And I was like, oh, Aidan McGeady. And he was like, I'm telling the gaffer about this, you'll not get away with this. And I was like, oh, sorry, sorry, big man. Like, uh -huh. Just a bit of banter, like the lads were saying do it. He went, nah, 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 I'm not having that. So then uh, Gunnar obviously realised that I was at the back of the bus, the lads were going to stop that, so I've jumped on and I was like, oh, I can't believe I've just done that, man. I'm going to get absolutely <laughs> terrorised here. And uh, I remember after that, I was working with Midge up at uh, Dundee United away. Right. Yeah, you know, working with Clarkie, so uh -huh. putting the first team boots out and all that. Uh -huh. So me and Midge were standing outside the first team dressing room, you know, when obviously they're all in. And Tomo kept opening the door, right? And I'm standing there, and he would open the door and look at me and then walk straight towards Martin O'Neill and then the door would close. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, he's going to tell the gaffer, he's going to tell the gaffer. <laughs> he's going to tell the gaffer that, but then uh, nothing happened really. And I thought, I've got away with this here. And I've, the old, rest, the old uh, boot room at Celtic Park was under the stairs, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. I'm down the tunnel on the right hand side and I'm, sit, I'm standing at the back with my pair of boots and Tomo and Rad Douglas have come in. And I'm like, everybody out apart for you. And I'm standing at the back like that. Ah oh, lads, don't leave. And then they've shut the door. Right? Rab held me down and Tom would just get shoe polish and oh, yeah. polish me for head to toe. Oh. Yeah, I was going home to train man that day with a black, black, black face, <laughs> shoe polished up, dubbing. That's probably not. How come that doesn't happen anymore? <clears throat> I don't know, it's... it's what the, the, the game's different now, I think. Especially for younger players. Younger players are now all about social media and stuff, uh, aren't they? They want, to, they want to have more... They want to have... A th 10,000 followers on Instagram before they played a game in the first team. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Uh -huh. I don't know, it's, there's, there's probably more of a, a lack of respect, I would say now, for senior players, do you know what I mean? But see, other than you didn't get senior players like them the day. Senior players didn't act uh, like that. No, I even think, you know, the way a manager used to, used to like, have a go at you in the dressing room, I even think that's going out now. Mm -hmm. There's times, there's times where I think, right, have, have a go at him, and the manager will be like, no, you can't, he's a young lad, you don't want to go on his case. I'm thinking when I was a young lad, people would, people would slaughter me. Do you know what I mean? You done something at a line, the manager would slaughter you. But it's just the game's changing. That is changing. See, when I was younger, like if I knew I was changing the first team next day, I wouldn't be able to sleep the night before, worrying, uh, like nervous. But whereas now, young lads like you say, they think they should be. In young the young lads dreaming the first team now, and not not so much when I was at Preston last season, but young lads are dreaming the first team, and they'll do something wrong, and you'll have a go at them, and they'll answer back to you. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Never even played a game in their life. But you would never dream of that. I would never have done that. No. It's my Lenny, Lenny slaughter me, I would mm -hmm. never have done that. Too much respect, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, was it at, at the American trip after the AC Milan game that like, No, that I, this was before. So, uh, that was the that was the pre-season. I'd gotten the first team into that season. Then I came back thinking, I hope I'm with the first team pre-season. Ended up, I signed a new contract just the end of that season there. And then I came back in pre-season with the first team. So, uh, in Seattle, uh, me and a few of the lads, me and Hank Wallace and Marshy and that went out for a bit of shopping and that and uh, we bumped into it. Big John was on his own as well, right. out shopping on his own. So he walked into the shop and he's uh, he's clocked us straight away and he's like, lads, come over here. Oh, hey, Eddie. Picks up, picks up the worst, the worst <laughs> red leather jacket I've ever seen in my life. But I'm thinking, what, what's, what's, he, what's he getting at here? He's like, oh, try that one, lad. Hey, the pair of Timby boots. I had the nuts. <laughs> Where the Timbies were up, man. <laughs> and I was like, nah, oh, John, I don't know if this is me. Like, I'm, I'm looking at the lads going, oh, Should I buy this ahead? Nah, oh, look at this. Thinking, is this his style? Is this what he's into here? <laughs> so then uh, he started getting me to buy it, and I was like, he was pushing me into it. He's supposed like, to buy it ahead. Like, hey, I'll, I'll have you in for it. And I was like, ah, oh, John, it's not really me, you know. And he's going, nah, I'm telling you, man, I'll pair of Timby boots, man. Imagine that in the tunnel on a Saturday night. <laughs> So I eventually I went, nah, John, I'm just, I'm just going to leave it. I might come back later on. <laughs> but I, I, just walk, I walked out the shop going, I don't know what, is that what he's into? Like, I didn't really know what he was getting at. Like, I was thinking, I don't really know what's going on here. Going to the lads, that was the worst jacket I've ever seen. Man, what's he all about, man? Is he like that? <laughs> Got back to the hotel and like, a few of the older lads, like think Jackie McNamara and that, were going, Held you with a whisker away from buying the worst, the worst jacket in Seattle. <laughs> 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 and I was like, oh, <laughs> 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 Stitch off a belter. 
Really? But see now, at the time, I didn't even really, I didn't realise what it was doing, but now I go stitching me up to get me to buy the worst jacket. It's about $500 you know, as well, this yeah. jacket. I'll have you. And I'm like, I'll have you. <laughs> he's willing to spend $250. He's willing to spend $250 for banter. <laughs> that is different levels, <laughs> For banter. Just to see me walking in on the night out with that red jacket on. Oh, that's funny. <laughs>